Soft robots are uh, robots that exploit their compliance to be um, highly adaptable and uh, be able to deal with the uh, environment that are not structured, highly dynamics, and they can provide also a safe uh, human-robot interaction. Despite uh, these uh, fantastic advantages, uh, they still rely for their control on uh, electronics and uh, so microcontrollers and also some of them uh, can be also controlled by pneumatic actuation, uh, so limiting uh, a little bit the usability. So today, so you can see actually here uh, several examples of uh, soft robots. We mainly use to fabricate this additive manufacturing, so multi-material 3D printing, so we can actually make them several characteristics in terms of mechanical properties of the material. And here you can see actually what it takes to control this system. And for example, like uh, we need a lot of valves that of course cannot be embodied to avoid that they can impair their movement and also their compliance and adaptability. So today, I will uh, show you how we are going to solve a little bit this issue towards uh, um, what we call soft matter computing. In particular, what we want uh, is to achieve in future um, electrical free, uh, electronic free um, uh, soft controllers that can be embodied in, uh, in the robot body and uh, also can perform uh, uh, computation. So we don't need to rely in future to uh, electronic microcontroller and, and, and valves. Uh, in particular, what we are doing is uh, to uh, 3D print these uh, kind of uh, uh, systems such that in future they can actually be manufactured together with the robot body and have a highly integrated solution. We usually use this multi-material 3D printer uh, to print uh, the valves and so we, can, we are able to uh, actually um, 3D print the, the valve with uh, uh, the different mechanical property of the material, the one for uh, the soft membrane, the bistable membrane, and uh, also the, the spool. Uh, and thanks to this, uh, we can actually be able to manufacture this. Uh, so is that more than one head, print head, or is it just use the same print head in different this ways? This is uh, a polyjet printer, so he has many heads, and uh, he uses acrylic based uh, polymers that are released uh, as a, a drop. And uh, there is a row that actually passes through it uh, with a UV light for the curing. Uh, so that is the way in which this is different from maybe uh, FDM uh, 3D printer. So this allows to achieve very high accuracy. And that's the reason why we can use it also to uh, make uh, soft robots with uh, like empty chamber thanks to the accuracy of the printer. We can print so many valves all together in one batch without the tray and after the printer can uh, like perform all the manufacturing for us. Usually what we do at, at the end of the print, we put the parts that are like covered with the supporting material in a chemical bath. So for uh, that will dissolve the supporting material. So uh, providing us with the final part that we can assemble. Today, we show the SR latch, that uh, is one of the basic uh, elements of computation, uh, with a soft bulb. So SR latch, uh, I think you probably already saw the videos on computer files about latches, uh, so you can actually go there to, to check their functioning. With a D flip-flop, we can store a single bit of information. We design and manufacture a soft bulb that can actually functionally replicate uh, the similar behavior of uh, an SR latch. What we do is use a bistable membrane to actually switch state between one and zero. And this bistable membrane is also connected to a spool valve that allow to actually uh, get the output that will be connected to the soft actuator that you see here. So the energy supply of the whole system comes from the compressor here, which is basically a pneumatic reservoir which provides us the energy. However, how we distribute the energy to the robot depends on the state of these memories. So by resetting and setting the state of each valve, which refers to each bit of binary information, what we can achieve is to differently distribute the pressure, process the information, and actuate the soft arm. The left hand side, the number one valve we are showing here, is the bistable structure we use to uh, store the information. And in order to convert that information into the pneumatic signal we use to control this arm, what we do is, for the second one here, we attach a spool valve on it, 
so that we can convert that information into the configuration of this robot. For example, now if I send a set signal, what we can see is that the robot will be activated. And if now I reset it, the robot will restore to its equilibrium position. Where do you see these sort of um, robots as being used? Then? Okay, so soft robots can be used, uh, like in general, they have been uh, considered idly effectively, for example, for manipulation of soft produces, for example, in agriculture or like in the, the food industry. Uh, that's because uh, they are like very compliant, they don't require a very complicated control and the knowledge of the model of the object, because they can actually uh, um, like adapt to it and be able to grasp. So this is actually three jaw gripper by uh, controlling it with uh, even in open loop uh, is able to grasp object with different shapes. And that is actually something that have been considered very um, uh, advantages for, for like um, in general for this kind of manipulation application. But also you can see here a soft arm and you can imagine when you want, for example, to do pipe inspection or you want to navigate in environment that are really cluttered. So you want to be able to dexterously um, navigate through the environment and, and reach something. So like the rigid robot, uh, again, require a lot of uh, um, control because when they navigate this kind of environment, uh, you don't want to damage the environment or the robot itself, or maybe like uh, uh, have a not safe interaction with humans. While uh, because of their compliance, this soft robot can actually achieve a, a very dexterous configuration and uh, also they are safe. So they can uh, uh, be in contact with the environment uh, and without uh, like damaging it. And you know the kind of soft valves and things you've been obviously talking us through, do you think they will scale down? Will they be scalable? That is actually the next stage of the research because at the moment we achieve that kind of size, but to be able in future to, uh, of course, uh, uh, embed that kind of system in the robot body and perform some computation, we need to be able to, to scale down. That, of course, requires some technological advancement from the additive manufacturing point of view, materials. Uh, so soft robotics actually need a lot of input from other disciplines to be able to, to progress further. It's effectively, yeah, like you need it to work in like biology, right? Yeah, I mean, there is... So we're talking a cellular size here, very small. Yeah, exactly. We need to definitely try to achieve like very miniaturized uh, software to be able to build a logic gate and, uh, and actually perform computation in future. There you go. So here we have uh, different quadrupeds. Today we're going to see the spot one. Yeah, just to give an idea of where we traveled. This is all the way from where we were before here with the, the round table, the loop closed.